Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 58. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and I have a confession to make. I know a few weeks ago we posted a few schedules for the show on various social media accounts, and today's episode was supposed to feature Nick Martin of Sleeping With Sirens. I'm here to tell you that that conversation did happen, and it is coming in the near future, but I've decided to postpone that interview so that we can talk about something far more pressing and far more serious. About two weeks ago, I was messing around on Twitter, and I tweeted at my buddy Jono from The Swellers, or who used to be in The Swellers, I should say, and told him that I thought it would be a good idea if the band reunited and covered the Standell song, Dirty Water, to raise money for their hometown of Flint, Michigan. If you're living under a rock or you're somebody that just doesn't follow the news, the people of Flint, Michigan have been poisoned by their water for well over, for many months at this point, and the national media has only recently picked up on it. But the truth is, this is a problem that has been growing worse and worse by the day for a long time, and it's really starting to come to a head. A lot of people are paying attention to this. Celebrities are donating mi millions, literally millions of bottles of water to the city, but it's not enough. You know, long-term solutions need to be figured out. And as people working in music, Jono and I didn't really feel like there was much we could do except for create a compilation. So that's what we did. Not Safe to Drink is an upcoming charity compilation. Jono and I are kind of piecing together between ourselves and everyone that we know in the music industry to help benefit the people of Flint. 100% of the money raised from the compilation will go directly to help the people of Flint. And so far, we have about 60 artists committed to delivering songs. Some of them have been previously released tracks, but a large majority of the artists appearing are giving us new or rare songs that have not seen the light of day prior to this point. Some of them are being recorded specifically for this release. With all this in mind, I wanted to get Hollux and Inside Music involved, and so here we are. On this episode of the podcast, Jono and I are going to discuss the issues plaguing Flint in depth, as well as how we came up with the compilation, the artists involved, including a huge surprise for fans of Jono's work that I think is going to really take this thing to another level for certain people. And also, we try to keep the focus on how people can help the people of Flint. Unlike a lot of other episodes, this show talks very little about music and a lot more about action. Far too often we see things that are going wrong in the world around us and we think that we would do something if only we knew what we could do. Jono and I have created this sampler, sampler compilation because it's what we know how to do best and we hope that it can be a starting point to get other people involved in the movement to help the people of Flint. So that's what you're going to hear in this episode, and I really hope you pay attention because as somebody that comes from the state of Michigan, it breaks my heart to see how the people of my home state are suffering. Before we get there, however, I do need to point out one thing. I'm not going to talk about Twitter. I'm not going to talk about the blog. I want this episode to be about not safe to drink, but we do have a sponsor, and that sponsor is Holix, who has graciously provided a free account to Not Safe to Drink in order to distribute promotional copies of the charity compilation to members of the press to help raise awareness. Anyways, Holix is the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution company. What that means is that Holix helps independent artists, record labels, and publicists around the globe share unreleased music with members of the press and the industry at large without worrying too much about piracy. Should leaks occur, Holix has a wide array of tools to help combat piracy, in, including an automated takedown tool that is simply incredible. For more information on Holix and access to a free 30-day trial, visit www.holix.com. That's www.h-a-u-l-i-x.com. Now, as a special gift to some of you, a little reveal, if you will, I'm going to play a song that will appear on the compilation from one of the biggest bands to uh, contribute to the compilation, and then we're going to get into my conversation with Jono. Again, the addresses you need to know are facebook.com slash not safe to drink, twitter.com slash not safe to drink, flintkids.org, and not safe to drink .bandcamp.com. Please, please do whatever you can to help the people of Flint. I'm hoping this episode is just the beginning of hopefully a lot of projects aimed at bringing more attention to this issue, and I hope you'll help us in spreading the word. Thank you so much for listening. Please enjoy the show. Came as a surprise Whistles and bells And although I was not asking No, you yeah, all put up your help Yeah, I ain't never gonna find another one It's done me like you did Like you do like you done, dust me like you did, like you do, like you done. 
sun I was keeping to myself Waiting on some train When your ears clear uh, Yeah, so we're supposed to have an episode of the show today But there was a big technical malfunction with it So it isn't coming out So I was like, this is the perfect opportunity To like plug this comp And kind of just spend a few minutes talking about that Awesome all right, man. So, well, are you are you home in Michigan today? Yeah, I'm in Grand Blank right now. Grand Blank. Okay. And for people listening, how far is that from Flint? Uh, from Flint Township, it's about like two miles, and then to the actual city, it's about two exits on the highway. So not far at all. Yeah. And you've lived there like your whole life around the city, anyways. Uh, yeah. Um, I moved to this side of the state when I was in, I think, like eighth grade. So my like actual formative years, <laughs> I consider like being like a Flint kid. It's kind of what we call ourselves. Flint kid. I like it. I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you and I have this, this compilation and I, I saw the artwork this morning. I guess everyone else will see it by the time this is live. So we're going to release this tomorrow amidst all the announcements that we have coming along. So we can talk about everything all at once. And then if people want to hear the audio version, they can. Uh, so let's, let's start at the inception. So when did you first hear of this, of the problem in Flint? Uh, it's been really strange because it's been a kind of like a downward spiral evolution of all the water situations going on. So at first, and a lot of people don't hear about this part, um, the water prices in Flint were insane and people, and this is pre switching over. So everyone was already complaining about how terrible the water prices were, how what they're actually getting for what they're giving isn't worth it, yada, yada, yada. A bunch of people were already upset. And then once the thing, or once they switched over to uh, the Flint River, that's when all of us were kind of like, that's where people joke about like throwing heroin needles and dead bodies, right? Like, <laughs> why would people drink out of that? That's really weird. But the thing is, no one thought about the lead pipes. So it started with, you heard about E. coli in the news, and then, oh, boil your water, it'll be fine. And then you start hearing about, like, oh, there might be lead, but then the government's telling everyone, hey, relax, it's fine, don't worry about it. So all of my friends are bathing in this water and drinking this water. They're like, oh, I have a Brita filter, it'll be fine. And those those aren't made for lead, those aren't made for, you know, these big problems that shouldn't be in normal households. Definitely. So it started from, you know, people just complaining around town to like local news kind of covering stuff. And it wasn't for a while until national news even cared. Cause that's kind of the, in my mind, that's kind of the history of Flint. People only care if something's very bad, but things have been bad for so long that people just like, yeah, that's the normal there, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. How long was it from, I guess, when you first started hearing reports of like, there's something wrong with the water to when national media kind of picked up like in the fall of last year? Uh, a while. <laughs> <laughs> a while. Years? And, but but it's, it's like, I, I, at least a lot of months. Um, okay. The, the best way to put it is when you're in a situation and you're not sure if things are actually bad, like the people that are getting the water, you don't know enough about it and you're confused. And we hear other people talk about it. It's not like you're at a grocery store and they're like, like, for example, Kroger just pulled a lot of like a uh, dole salad and it's just not at the grocery store and there's like empty slots. And it says like due to E. coli outbreak or whatever, but people don't have that on their faucets at home. And like the, like lower income housing and stuff, those people either don't have TVs or don't have cars. You know what I mean? It's it's a bigger issue than, oh, our, our friends that are taking advantage of cheap housing in Flint, like, that have their smartphone and they have all this stuff. That's one side of it. But then the other side of it is, like, especially, like, what I witnessed last night, which I'll talk about in a bit, there's a lot of people who are in, like, the real heart of Flint, like the North End, and a lot of places that are like really bad and kind of the forgotten areas. And those are the people that don't have the luxury and the privilege to witness everything that we're witnessing and witness like normal news that tells them not to do this kind of stuff. So it's actually, you know, it's very frustrating. It's 
it's pissing a lot of people off. I can imagine. I mean, it's weird for me as an outsider. I mean, I'm from Michigan, but having been living in Boston the last few months, like it was weird to see like local people react to it. And then like I got to kind of see how the national news picked it up. And it was so weird because they jumped on it so late, but like, they made it seem like this was like an, an immediately new problem or like something that had just popped up overnight. And that's really not the case. Yeah. And it's it's one thing, too, where people are witnessing like it's the first time where it's actually us, you know what I mean? Uh, and like, again, it's my water's fine. Like I'm not connected to this, but all of my friends are, you know, like there's this, there's a bigger thing going on. And when you are in a room full of people that are actually dealing with it, and then you see this stuff on TV, you get the firsthand reaction to it where it's like, really? Like they're just using this, to their advantage or, Oh, they're talking about this, but they're like, it's like a hollow shell of the actual situation. You know what I mean? Cause the most, I guess the most interesting part of this whole situation is people's reactions to everything because there's a few things. There's how do we fix it? Who's to blame? And what do we do in the meantime? And like the, the best realistic reaction is you can't fix it. It already happened. And that sucks. And a lot of people don't, they're too afraid to admit that, but that's what happened. So, okay, so they'll give you a bunch of bottled water. All right, that's the nice temporary solution so people can drink again, whatever. But uh, I, I guess I'll just say it now. Um, so last night, Macklemore showed up to the Flint Local 432 after our like super, we had like six people there for our little meeting. And then Macklemore showed up with a group called Raise It Up Youth they're from Flint and uh, it was just a bunch of inner city kids and they got to talk about their real stories. And what was happening was these kids are talking about how, okay, you see like share, she donated like a hundred, 181 million bottles of water or something ridiculous. Uh, I believe that was a number, but the thing is like the lower income areas, like the actual projects for people living near the housing projects, they have only gotten one package of water and they're the people that can't afford to go out and buy water every day. But then you go to like the nicer areas and they're getting two, like two whole cases of water every week. So that's, it's what has been happening in Flint. is happening all over again in different situations. They're neglecting the lower income areas and they're focusing on, Oh, well this is safe enough or, Oh, I I'm familiar with this enough, you know? And it's not equal. It like hasn't been equal in such a long time. So it's really upsetting. Yeah, I feel like the news is really big on like this person donated a hundred thousand bottles or this person did that. But as you know, other sources have pointed out, including Michael Moore on his personal blog, that there's like a hundred thousand people in Flint. So a hundred thousand bottles of water doesn't really go that far. It doesn't go anywhere really. Yeah. So like you said, it's a short term solution. And once you start like crunching the numbers, like everyone needs like the if you went with like the bare minimum of water, people are supposed to have a day like we'd be talking millions in no time in terms of like yeah, bottles and, needed. And like the other thing, too, is so everyone keeps talking about uh, like, well, people need to start actually changing the piping, like the real infrastructure of the city. And that's going to cost. Like from what I heard, like originally it was like close to like two hundred fifty million dollars, and this is a whole a whole city of plumbing and piping and everything. Like it's actually crazy. So, but this is the thing: when they eventually do that, and people are saying it'll take like twenty years or so. Like this isn't I'm paving a road because there's a pothole. This is changing a whole city. So by the time they get all that done. It doesn't help that all these kids that either have lead poisoning or, you know, now they have learning disabilities because of the exposure to lead. A bunch of people are getting sick. Legionnaire's disease is connected to all this. Like, that stuff is still happening. So, and I think you can agree with me on this one. Uh, I think one of the best ways to help for now that, like, I guess bears human comprehension, uh, it's the Community Foundation of Greater Flint. And they have a thing called the Flint Child and Health Development Plan. Yes. Or Flint Child Health and Development Plan. Yeah. And that whole idea is they're going to educate these kids. And when people have learning disabilities, like at a young age, which they're going to now, 
uh, there's actual programs that help them through that, and it actually focuses on neglected kids. And in addition to that, since there's already so many problems in Flint for the last few decades, this whole thing kind of focuses on, okay, like, let's look at nutrition. How can you eat healthier? What are ways that uh, fresh fruit and vegetables can actually get lead out of your system or, you know, stop the side effects of it or whatever? Uh, and in addition to that, it's, it's this big picture fix where it's not just the water that was the problem. Everything was the problem. And then the water is, you know, I guess the most uh, visible side effect of everything. So it it's a really intense issue, but if people, whether they're donating to our comp or giving directly, flintkids.org is the best place to give for now. Definitely. And, you know, kind of tagging with what you said, a lot of people haven't really, the news hasn't really covered this yet, but until these pipes are fixed, like the property value of every home in Flint is essentially zero. Yeah. And, well, because p- people don't realize. So uh, my friend who's ho- or where we have great advanced practice, the singer of that band bought his house for around, I think it was like six or $7,000 total. And this isn't like, oh, okay, like, you're just making stuff up and exaggerating. Like, no, like, people are buying houses for a few thousand dollars. But the problem is, and again, like last night, people are talking about how their families have been in apartments for like 17 years. And then out of nowhere, people are coming in and being like, we'll offer you $1,000 to move right now. And it's such a, it's a bad choice. But when you see that easy money, like, Again, the people that are struggling financially are going to be like, I guess. And then what do they do, you know? And then the housing market in general, like, it's it's one of those things that happens in every city where it's the whole, like, gentrification thing where you're like, okay, here's a rundown area. We need to help it. But how how are we going to help it? Well, let's make some hip coffee shops Mm -hmm. and let's do this. And let's pretty much the, the whole idea is, we're accidentally going to run black people out of this town. Yeah. We're going to justify hardcore. <laughs> yeah. And like, and hearing, you know, a room full of people of color actually saying that openly to Macklemore to his face, like that's not fixing anything. All it's doing is replacing what was already there. And like, they were talking about that in Flint too, where they're like, there was a black owned bookstore and whatever. And then out of nowhere, this new hip, and it, it is a cool place, keep in mind, but this new bookstore opened at, like downtown and everyone's like, we finally have a bookstore. And people are like, we've had a bookstore. You just didn't notice or care. And it, it's that kind of thing that happens all the time. So it's, it's just this bigger issue that deals with so many variables at the same time, you know? And that's, I think that's why a lot of people are so pissed off. And especially seeing that firsthand last night, it just... It makes my blood boil, which is why I'm super intense on the phone right now. <laughs> no, that's that's it's understandable, man. You should be. I, it's it's weird because you're you're right. It is like the water is the most visible problem, but it is a complete systematic breakdown of like failing the people of Flint. That this is just the latest in a turn of events, and I don't think a lot of yep. people really grasp that yet. Yeah, I mean, you look at like so to put it in perspective. So I've been to. I think our band played in like 18 different countries and most of them we would travel, at least the English speaking one. They were like, where are you guys from? Or like, Oh, Flint, Michigan. And people in other countries are like, Ooh, I feel like really even you guys like know that reputation because to everyone it's, that's where Michael Moore's from. And that's what Roger and me. Exactly. Exactly. And like the only other like positive thing we ever had was semi pro, which is only (laughs) kind of positive. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, just like the only thing like our city really got from that was, uh, <laughs> they like changed to Coney Island. So like the little diner had a new yep. front. That's about it. That's about it. But like, you know, and the, like everything else, it's like Chiodos was from here. They got big. That John Connor dude's getting big. Like, but it's, and King 810, but it's one of those things where, it's that awkward conversation of, okay, well, it's promoting how bad Flint is. Exactly. What you want to do. And it goes two sides because I agree with a lot of the things the guys are saying. Like, because I grew up with those dudes. Like, we worked at the Flint local together. We did all this stuff together. And all these people are like, oh, like they're, they're, like, they're saying such bad stuff about the city. 
they're saying what's happening around the city, you know, like, and my buddy Steven made a good point too. He was saying like, you can't keep just fluffing what's happening. Cause I was, and this is like full transparency. Uh, my band baggage has been working on a new video cause we have a song called Flint. And this is like, the song was already written about the city before all this water stuff. And now we're like, okay, well we could actually focus on this thing. And I like had this idea where it's like, okay, we're going to show, um, you know, like a lot of bad things about the city and then a lot of good things about the city. And I listed what was going on and my buddy just goes, okay, so I don't mean to be a dick in the situation, but pretty much what you're saying is our white friends with tattoos that are opening businesses downtown. That's what makes Flint good. That's not the case. And I'm like, you nailed it. <laughs> Because that's one of those things. It's the same exact thing like I've been talking about, you know, and and just it's this reputation where you have to acknowledge the bad stuff so the rest of the world actually notices. And it's not just like a butt of someone's joke. Like it shouldn't be that anymore. It should be. This is a big problem and it's been a problem. How do we do something about it? Because now that we have this 15 minutes of fame, how do we properly utilize that to make the city like better than it was once all this water stuff gets fixed, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. And especially in an election year, you know, that eventually the press is going to lose interest and it's like, we have to act as fast as possible to do to like start, at least start as much as possible before that spotlight goes away, because then it's going to be impossible to pull everyone else back until Michael Moore probably releases his Roger and me sequel that I assume he's in the middle of producing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and that's like the biggest part too. Like everyone last night at that community meeting, they're all like, okay, so what happens when the cameras go away? Like when they shut off, do you shut off? Like do people stop caring? Exactly. And it's, and it's that like terrible thing where we're in this generation where uh, you go online and you click a button to donate and you donate like $5 and you're like, cool, I'm good. Yeah. And somebody has like a GoFundMe account and you like donate to that. And everyone's always asking for money, but every cause is overshadowed by another thing the next day. And when it's happening to like a place that's so close to home, literally to me, like what happens when that stops? You know, we're, we're, like, I don't want to be a blip on the radar. I want to be loud as hell and be like, this is not done. This isn't like a thing that they mentioned on the daily show once. And then you never hear about it again. Like this is going to last for a really long time. And we were already the butt of everyone's joke before, but now it's like, okay, we'll put your money where your mouth is. Like actually do something about it. Cause, but the thing is we can't ask celebrities to replace the pipes themselves. You know what I mean? So it's, that's why I think what me and you are doing like this compilation, it's like music aside, who really, who cares about that stuff at the end of the day, it's about raising awareness for a, a charity that matters. And B, the fact that people who would normally never donate to this kind of thing and be like, eh, I don't know. Now they have a reason to. And there's a lot of young people that don't even know what's going on. And now they have a reason to care and a reason to donate and a reason to be part of something where normally they would be the person that would just kind of scroll by on Twitter and be like, oh, whatever. You know, that's that. I think that's the most important part of what we're doing right now. Yeah. I like to tell people that retweets do not equal charity work. <laughs> exactly. And that, I mean, that's a, that's a big problem. But yeah, let's let's talk about the compilation. So it kind of it kind of came out of the blue. Like I wasn't necessarily I think I was half serious when I mentioned it to you on Twitter. I was actually just trying to make a really shitty Standells joke with the song yeah. Dirty Water. And as much as because in, like living in Boston, I've heard that song like every week for four or five years now. Uh, and when I think what, of, what is it? What's the, the song again? The Standells have a song called Dirty Water that's all about living in Boston and how the water is so gross there, but they, they've learned to love it because it's home. And so in my, okay. head, in my head, I was like, well, damn, if anyone's going to make a cover song to raise money, like Dirty Water would be, a, would be kind of a tongue-in-cheeky way to do it. And I tweeted at you about that, and you were like, maybe a comp sounds good. And I was like, holy crap, that is a good idea. And to be honest, I was shocked that you know, that it took like you and I joking on Twitter essentially to come up with this idea because it has been present for so long and I've seen artists tweet about it, but it speaks back to that whole thing where people are like, well, if I say something that's doing my part and it's not like you have to be active about it. Yeah. Uh, so and, go ahead. 
Oh, I mean, <laughs> uh, I think the funniest part about everything, too, was, like, so my parents had a really good, <laughs> had a good talk with me where they they were like, I know your heart is in helping other people, but at some point you need to do something that actually makes you money. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I mean, you know, I mean, you have, like, the other jobs and stuff, too, but, like, as a writer, like, for me, right now, that's my only thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I try and keep space open so I could work on music and I could do my other stuff. Um, so with writing, it's, like, it's on my own time. I have to, like, okay, I could sit down and do this, or I could, like, watch TV all day and then forget it, and then I just don't make any money while my girlfriend's working and doing stuff. So I, I had this talk with my parents where I was, like, I, I feel – like it's a selfish thing at the end of the day where it's like, I like helping people more than helping myself. And I don't care about making money. Like I can get by enough, which I guess is one benefit of living in this area where like our rent is cheap and everything, you know? Uh, but then when it came to this, it was like, I have a reason to like wake up and be positive and do something. And like, and it started with a joke on Twitter, you know? Right. And you think about how, how many people can do that kind of thing with the access they have where whether it's like I sent one email or asked a friend who knew someone who knew someone like the amount of bands we got and the, like the reach we had is ridiculous. And like, I would just like update my parents and stuff and be like, Hey, we just got this band. They're freaking out. (laughs) But it's one of those things where it's like, how the hell is no one doing this already? You know? And it's not like, Oh, we're superheroes for doing this. I don't even care about that. No, but it's yeah. the fact that it's like someone's doing something for someone else and it's it's its own identity and its own uh just existence, you know? Like it's it's not us doing it, it's its own thing. Exactly. Like it's one of those things that you know immediately became bigger than like you or I and it was so simple. That was like what almost it, it almost it made me happy but it also kind of made me angry how easily it all came together where I was like seriously why didn't someone else do this before like we got around to doing it? Yeah. <laughs> because it took us maybe 3 days to be like I think we have 50 songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and big bands like people people were very quick to be like oh you're doing something like and that was kind of the response I got from people I don't know what your interactions was like with bands and you could tell me but like the first time I talked to Craig Owens for example about doing this like the very first thing out of his mouth was like I can't believe someone's doing this for my city and I'm so happy that you're like that someone's taking it upon themselves to do this and I half of me was like dude you could have done this already and he laughed he's yeah. like I, I could have but like I don't know. It's that maybe it's that mindset that like one person doesn't think they can make a huge difference, but it only takes one person yeah. to kind of circle the wagons. That's really all you and I are doing is being like, "Hey, well, who, and, who wants to do this?" Like, <laughs> and a good, I guess, another time with this whole Macklemore thing, uh, like we were talking about privilege last night, and I know I brought it up a few times already, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so I have my writing, and I have like 13 years of being in a band and meeting people, and like. I'm just naturally like, schmo- sorry, one second. <clears throat> I'm a like schmoozer guy. So I naturally am just like talking to people all the time, but I've always had just a group of friends that I wasn't using as contacts for anything. Cause I don't, I'm not that kind of person, you know? And then when there was finally that thing that mattered, it's like, now it's time to call in the favors. So I used what I had over other people where it's like, if like, Steve Derrickson down the street wanted to do this, it'd be a lot harder for him to do it. And, you know, with bigger artists, it's like they, people are afraid of doing something because they don't know what the reaction will be, you know? So that's why it doesn't matter who started it. It's matter. It's who is a part of it. Exactly. I think that's the most important part. So like with Craig, like Swellers and the Chiodos bros, which was the original name. Like we used to play all the time back in the day. And like, there's a bunch of bands where, like even if genre wise or like people wise, maybe there was like small town clashing back in the day, whatever, but there's bands like it lies within and there's a lot of stuff in the area that like these people instantly go, I'm in. There was no hesitation. There's no, Oh, I got to talk to my label. Oh, it's going to be this process. They didn't care. And that's the coolest thing. And one of the, like the bigger things for me too, is like, I reached out to a few people where I was just like, I'll see what happens, whatever. Like it wasn't, it it wasn't saying like, Hey, you're like, Hey, manager X, your particular artist I want. I was like, 
if there's anything you can do to help, please let me know. And that, that was another interesting thing, just how people were responding. Like taking back Sunday, like immediately we're in, what song do you want? Like what? <laughs> okay. And then like another cool thing, like the bands we're announcing today, uh, like real friends, I had them up and they're like, we'll get one of our older songs for you. No problem. And people like don't realize it's not about like this special unreleased thing. It's just name attachment, you know, like at the, like that's for the greater good of this compilation and for the charity in general. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on and the coolest thing. And like, no one really knows this. I'm about to post it. And I probably should have told you that I'm about to post it. Um, that my brother and I are actually going to do a new Sweller song and it's going to be like the final song of our band. That's so crazy. And uh, we're, I think next week or this Friday, we're getting together and actually like writing a song together for the first time in two years or something like that. So you guys uh, haven't even written yet. Uh, Nick has ideas. Like me and him have been like going back and forth with stuff, but it's like how we always did it. Like we, we come up with the idea, but now that there's like, this focus and there's this reason to do it it's like well we know exactly what it's going to sound like because we're pissed off (laughs) you know and it's going to be like just a special thing but the fact that people have been joking about it and they didn't realize that nick and i were already talking about doing something definitely makes it so much funnier it made me (laughs) laugh yeah no go ahead oh go ahead (laughs) well like uh, i had some friends that like hit me up and they're like uh i was like or one of the things i posted was reach out to your favorite band and ask them to be a part of this compilation. And the funniest thing is all these people are like, well, this is awkward because the Swellers, that's my favorite band. And I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> so like the second I hang up the phone, I'm actually posting that. And then my brother and I are going on uh, the local news tomorrow. We're going, we're meeting up at the local at uh, like 5 a.m. And we're going to do like a little announcement thing of everything. So that's when the pre-orders are going up too, which is tomorrow, Wednesday. I don't know when this is going up, but it's that same kind of idea. Yeah, it'll be up on Wednesday so, probably, or maybe today. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever works. But it's like all all of this stuff is adding up, and it's just so cool because like, I don't care for personal reasons, but like for this project and, again, like the real cause, the amount of hype and build up to it, it's awesome. And it wasn't planned. Like, me and you joked about this, what, a week ago? Yeah. This feels like maybe a week and a half at this point. Yeah. Not two weeks. (laughs) And I was, like, looking at my list, and there's, like, 30 bands that are recording a song for this. Like, it's insane. Yeah, it's it's, it's wild. It's special. It's it's crazy. It was crazy how fast it came together just because it was local bands and big bands, but I didn't have a single person say no. I had some so one or two people that were like, I got to ask some people, but everyone was immediately like, yes, if I can, yes. Yeah. So, and they came from all over the, like, I know we have a lot of big bands and I'm sure you saw this. Like I've gotten emails and Facebook messages and tweets from bands literally all over the world that are like, if you want a song, like we have a song. It, it, it's, yeah. People, I feel like... I think it also speaks to the idea that like people see something like this happening and maybe they don't have money right away or they have money, but they don't feel like it's enough. Like we, this opportunity is like, Oh, I can be more involved somehow. And hopefully that's how music fans take it too. is like, okay, here's this thing that I can promote and have and share that'll help me kind of do my part more than just tweeting about this thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you think about like the demographic of like 13 to like 28 year olds and like, yeah those aren't necessarily like they don't have the financial backing to back their political backing. You know what I mean? So like, it's a nice opportunity to be like, we set this up for you and it's easy. Now we're going to teach you how to help, you know? So yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I feel like we, I feel like you did it right. It was like one thing that makes me so mad when I see charity things is when I, it feels like someone's really trying to make it about themselves while giving back. And this is very much like, I, we don't even have our names on it. We're just like, here's a compilation that's more just being released by an entity that's like, help Flint. It's, it doesn't really yeah. trace back to you and me because it's not how we. It's not how it should be, I don't feel like. And I, I've seen on Facebook, I've already seen like promoted ads for like, uh, there's a shirt There's a shirt that has like skull and crossbones and says like Flint Water Supply Company and stuff. I've seen that getting promoted and stuff like that where I'm like, eh, this seems like somebody taking $10 out, $10 out of 15 for themselves. 
Well, and that's like the number one thing I'm against. I don't like the idea of we need to raise money by investing all of this money that could have just gone directly to a donation anyway. So like, it's the same thing with like, if you're making a shirt, if you're making a physical product, like you have to pay for the cost of that. So then, so there, there's two sides of it. One side is money that could be going somewhere else is going away. So like a digital comp, we're not paying for press records. You get what you get. And it's, there's no cost put into this at all. That's the coolest part. Um, but then the other side of it is like, it's that idea of people that wouldn't normally donate have a reason to. So you look at like those kind of shirts and even though it's a goofy, whatever thing at the end of the day, that person is still getting money for something that matters, you know? So it's, that that's a really hard thing to think about because if you start breaking down the way people react and deal with these things, it's going to just drive you crazy, you know? So that's why I think I like coexisting with all of this stuff rather than picking the other stuff apart. Even though like my punk rock kid brain wants to and be like, no, don't do that. But I'm like, you're doing something. You're adding more awareness to the city that matters to me. You know, I'm fine with it. Exactly. Same here. Well, real quick for people that maybe haven't been following all our updates, and there's a ton of them because there's so many bands. Could you run through, I guess, why don't you run through some bands off the top of your head that you know are appearing? If there's any you forget, I'll just name the ones I remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I guess starting with the one, or some of the like really big ones, which is really cool. Uh, Taking Back Sunday, Anti-Flag, Propagandy, Real Friends, Pentimento, Gray Gordon, Swellers, and then the, the awkward thing is now I have three bands I'm in on the top. But again, it's and I'm not trying to make it about myself. It's music from our city, about our city, for our city, you know? Uh, so Baggage and Braided Veins are two of my projects. Um, the singer of Braided Veins, who has been in, he has lived in Flint virtually his whole life and has been like the biggest supporter of everything in this town. Uh, well, the, the good things at least, uh, he has a project called unison and I'm actually playing drums on that tonight. So I'm on like five songs or something for this, but Amazing. it's, again, it's one of those things where like, it's not about me. I'm contributing to help everything else. Um, and then I know we have Craig Owens and lives within American opera, uh, yeah. Craig Craig has an original song that we're getting probably today and American Operas is an unreleased song so there are a lot of like big they're like even the smaller acts there are people who are contributing things that their fans haven't heard or people who will be maybe discovering them for the first time it'll be a new song to everyone which is also kind of cool I mean it's it's good for the smaller bands obviously to appear alongside Taking Back Sunday but at the end of the day even the, the people that are giving us stuff they haven't released are basically giving away those songs for free because we aren't paying anyone yeah, and another cool thing, too, um, I talked to my brother about the whole comp, and he's recording a few bands at a discounted rate just for the compilation, which is really cool. That's crazy. And the same with uh, Mark Hudson at Rancho Recordo. So, you know, th there's people on the outside. Oh, even, like, um, someone who does mastering, like, they're offering to help the local band. Yeah. So what I, what I mainly wanted to do was... and. Uh, I don't know if the track listing is going to show up when we do the pre-orders. It shouldn't, but it might. <laughs> but there's going to be, it, right now it's at like 30. There's going to be 60 plus bands on this thing. And I first and foremost wanted to make sure that the Flip music community was represented because if it's about our city, I want our bands that are passionate about it to actually have a chance to coexist with these big national bands. Um, so I think that was a really important thing. And the other thing was a lot of the emails I got too, uh, we had to finally like cut them off because it was so intense, which is again, awesome. Like people that reached out. Very humbling. But uh, one of the coolest things was like a band from like the Bay area in California, like, Hey, I know we're not from Flint and we're not a big band, but we really want to reach out and we want to help. Uh, is there anything we can do? Or like a band from Long Island that did the same thing. And when I were getting those emails, like, way before like AP was posting about it and stuff. It was like, you're up, you're on because you actually care about this to you. It's not some weird, like, Oh, I want exposure. Like 
those aren't the bands we're having on this thing. We want bands that care and that are reaching out on their own, you know? So I, I like the idea of rewarding that kind of thing because in turn, it makes it like a nice real record. Yeah, it, it's it's really overwhelming. And I, I keep like, you and I are sharing a track listing right now. And every time I look at it, I'm just like, it's crazy that all these bands came together. Some of them make sense. Like any flag, I can't imagine them saying no to this because this is like what they do. Yeah. <laughs> same with Propagandi. Exactly. Um, but at the same time, having them included kind of, you know, solidifies that like this is a this is a real charity comp because th- again, that's what those bands do. Like when they appear, you're like, okay, people listen. Their fans are active, you know? Yeah. They want to get that's involved. why I, I, I felt it was important to include that kind of stuff and then when you were reaching out in your end with like Craig and It Lies Within like normally those bands wouldn't play shows together or appear on comps together but that's the important part about this whole thing it's bringing all of these different genres and mindsets together because instead of being someone who would uh, I guess exclude certain type of things just for our own benefit of like oh I, I would go to this kind of show I don't want that kind of band it doesn't matter like that's it's such a bigger cooler thing to have everyone involved and one uh thing i was really excited about uh tunde who's from flint and he's like blowing up he has just has this awesome like like electronic hip-hop it's just really cool stuff and uh he is like he's a very active person in the community too so having someone like him be on the same album as like Pentimento, you know what I mean? That normally wouldn't happen, but it's just something important and impressive that puts everyone together. So let's talk, let's talk. Okay. So when do we have a hard release date? Uh, February 20th is what I want to do. February 20th. So that would be, is that the Friday after Valentine's day or the Saturday? Uh, Valentine's day is a I Sunday. So I guess that's Saturday the 20th. Is that weird? No, I don't think it's weird. <laughs> uh, Kanye's putting his album out on a Thursday. We can put a compilation out on Saturday. Same thing. Yeah, we're Kanye. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's like Kanye. Our new album's called Wave. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kanye, not a contributor to this compilation. To be fair, we didn't ask yeah. him. <laughs> um, I mean, he reached out, but I'm like, dude, we already got 60 fans. Yeah, Sorry, man. <laughs> just, could, just had to say no. Couldn't. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but it is cool how the past is coming together. And so, for people that do want to pre-order it, what do you? The Bandcamp link is it just not safe to drink dot com? Correct. And that'll be up tomorrow. And, and Facebook and Twitter, it's just not safe to drink. Appropriate beginning with dash or slash not safe to drink. Yes. So just not safe to drink, Twitter, Facebook, um, and then on a local news too, uh, the reporter made a good idea or came up with a good idea. He said you should direct people to your Facebook and have that be like the center of operations and then link the Bandcamp to there mm-hmm. just for all the people that aren't really aware of yeah. how Bandcamp works and anything. Exactly. And uh, see, there's one other thing I thought we should cover here about about this release. And now it's, it's of course, skipping my mind. We, there's an email list people can sign up for if they want to. We tweet about it all the time. Follow the accounts and share it, really. I saw Taking Back Sunday share a post yesterday brought a lot yeah. of people not as many likes but that's that's fine just just share it just tell people about it and well, then i mean it. i think it's all based <laughs> on your demographic too you know mm-hmm. where like an active band of this kind of stuff their fan base is going to have more of a i guess reaction to it whereas someone like taking back sunday the cool thing about it is people who normally wouldn't care about that kind of thing are going to be like oh wow like taking back sunday is like taking a stance on this and like that's crazy like that's such a cool thing yeah, I think it, it definitely, again, like a band like Taking Back Sunday is going to pull in a lot of eyeballs that we wouldn't be able to reach, nor would like a propaganda, propaganda or an anti-flag because they do have like that n- global reach, really, that's very open to like rock fans, pop fans, punk fans, blah, blah, blah so on and so forth. And, you know, that's that's uh, something that's a lot different than a lot of the bands on the comp. But at the same time, the variety is kind of what makes this comp so exciting, at least to me, is that all these bands come together and they don't necessarily, they would never play shows together, but here they all, you know, they all want the same thing, which is to help the people of Flint. Yeah. And the, the way I look at it is that goes with anything involving this kind of charity work where like it shouldn't be about your own personal music taste or your own personal, you know, anything like that. Like it's, it's for everyone it's what benefits the most versus 
what's cool and hip because I've never been the person that wouldn't befriend a band if they were too poppy or too heavy or too whatever. Like I like people and I like, that's the whole point of this thing where it's to show people that just humans in general have a bigger role in life and you don't have to like hate certain types of people and you don't have to like segregate. You shouldn't do any of this stuff. Like people should want the best for everyone. And that goes with music that goes with art that goes with just human politics, you know, <laughs> like I, I like the idea that everyone's coming together to do something and they're not questioning it. Exactly. For people that are listening. So the comp comes, the pre-orders for the comp go up this Wednesday, which is February 3rd, not safe to drink .com. beyond supporting. I know we talked about this earlier, but just kind of bring things full circle beyond the comp. What can people, what should people be doing to get the word out, to do their part, to help the people of Flint? Uh, there's a, a bunch of different things going on. The one that we've been pushing is flintkids.org. Um, just straight financial donations to that. Helps a lot of bigger picture stuff. Um, United Way is helping. You know, the water, the whole water bottle thing does help, but there are a lot of better ways to help now. Uh, like Like I mentioned earlier, like it doesn't necessarily go to everyone. So the the whole idea of this is, it's not just Flint. There's places all over the world that are in trouble and there's smaller cities that are neglected. And there's like things like racial divide that are very real things where you think about like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, I'll, I won't go to that part of town cause you know, and it's the idea of just breaking those barriers and being like, why do humans have to do this kind of thing? Like it's, 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 it's upsetting. And then when you mix in politics with like, the whole Rick Snyder emergency manager situation, like hiding that kind of stuff into a bill, getting it passed, having someone be the mayor of Flint and then sign off on going to water without checking it and then not giving money to these neglected cities to prevent huge tragedies like this. And again, it's not malicious. It's that the world tends to forget the things that they don't want to care about and they're afraid to witness. And that's, I think, the bigger picture of this whole thing. I, I'm yeah, you know, I think I completely agree with you on that. And I hope that I hope that we play some small role in, you know, making an improvement or at least making an impact. It's kinda hard to know like what exactly will come of the comp, but it seems like we've got enough bands that as long as people are willing to put a little money where their mouth is, this is we'll be able to make a pretty substantial impact. At least for the music community. It's a start, if nothing else. And and that's at the end of the day you have to remember it's about opening the door for everyone else because not everyone's gonna run in immediately. Exactly. Um, and let's see, John. Anything else that we need to cover? Because I, I don't want us to get too repetitive, but I feel like I do want to make sure that we cover all of the bases about this situation and not get too far off track on it. Um, there's so much information out there. Is there like one news resource you think people should be looking at in order to keep up with what's happening? I know Michael Moore has been going crazy on his personal blog. If people want like breakdowns of things, um, but yeah. As far as like regular I, like news, it's elements, one of those things too where. A lot of people are afraid of even dealing with Michael Moore just because it hits it's true. It's weird, things. but it, it's yeah. true. I, yeah, I, I think when you're I mean, from I'm, Michigan, I'm you see people. Fan, yeah, like, when but it's one of those things where um, if you look at actual Michigan resources, that's a really big thing. Um, and we'll start reposting more stuff on our Twitter and our Facebook as well. Uh, I think that's one of the important things. Like Michigan Radio, they had a whole breakdown. It was like the timeline. It was MichiganRadio.org, I believe. Um, they have a timeline of the whole water crisis and like from the very pinnacle to them finally declaring a financial state of emergency or sorry, a, a, just a state of emergency in general. Um, so there's things like that. Uh, a lot of good bigger news uh, resources are posting stuff and it's more about asking questions and bringing up like weird things that are going on. Like, uh, so one example would be Rick Snyder, the governor, just hired this PR firm for Flint and someone related to that uh, is connected to the Nestle family and that's the bottling water company. So if you really okay. think about this kind of situation where uh, people are taking advantage of a town that's in trouble. So the people that are running the publicity campaign are tied to the company shoving bottled water in, into the city. So it's like, okay, well, what do you think their way of helping is going to be by promoting Nestle water? 
And, you know, there, there's all this like really strange stuff that people should be reading about. And it's hard to find if you're not looking for it. So we'll make sure that we're posting that kind of stuff. So if anything, it raises questions and you could start seeing different sides of things versus this is the fact coming from two 20 somethings that are, you know, doing a music compilation. Like exactly. it's not our voice. It's everyone else's. Uh, well, I guess the one last thing that we should definitely point out is who's, who's the artist responsible for the cover art? Because that's another thing that someone like was willing to do for us. Uh, it's my friend, Michelle Luxick. Uh, she has had a history with our band. Um, her husband, Mark Mahalik, he recorded the Swellers, like older material. Uh, she almost signed us to our very first uh, label deal. And she's just been our friend for a really long time. She's an amazing musician. And uh, she is working on a song with Mark for the compilation, which I, to me is a really special thing. And that's why like, there are certain things where some Flint bands are getting back together for this and something like her and Mark together that that's kind of one of those things where it's like, they're not even currently active in music, but they care so much about this that, you know, she's picking up a guitar again and he's like, you know, they're, they're doing something about it. So I reached out to her about the artwork and she was like, yep, I'm in. And then next day I have stuff already. So thank you, Michelle. You're awesome. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, I think that's everything. People, once again, you can go to Twitter. That's not safe to drink. Facebook.com slash not safe to drink. Bandcamp, not safe to drink.bandcamp.com. Pre orders will be up Wednesday, February 3rd, which is tomorrow. We'll probably try to get this out today. And yeah, I think that covers everything. Do you, is there anything we're missing? Uh, no, that should be it. Just right, remember man. flintkids.org. Flintkids.org, yes. Not safe to drink.bandcamp.com. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks so much for hopping on the phone with me today, John. I'm going to try to get this out quickly. What do you What do you got going on for the comp today? Um, You're I'm recording tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, we're doing the next band announcement in a second, and then uh, reading my buddy's. He wrote this huge thing about Flint. Reading that, and then going to record with him. That's a uh, Unison, the guy I was talking about earlier. Yes. And we're recording at uh, Mark Hudson's studio, Rancho Recordo in Fenton. And that's the place that helped out Baggage, Braided Veins, and Swellers with their last few records. Shout out Rancho Recordo. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You have a great day. And uh, thanks so much for, you know, thanks for as much for doing this with me and letting me be involved in this with you. It's, it's, it's amazing so far. Well, thank you for the, the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to be a smart ass in a productive way more often. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what we all, all right, aspire to do. Have a great day. Bye.